Hey everybody, I'm Passmore Nope, and welcome back to Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus Master Thief Sprints. We're doing a Perilous Ascent to start off with. This is the last area, the uh, Kung Fu Pandas area. Uh, these guys are probably the easiest enemies in the game, those baboons with the sticks. Literally just run at them, they cannot hit you without you first hitting them. Uh, those apes in the diapers. Uh, pretty easy when you have them out in the open. When you get them in a corridor like this, it's a little trickier, so just be wary. The, uh, those guys rolling in the snowball will try to hit you. They will track you. Here I start hopping around a little bit because there are some annoying little events that you can run into here where the planks break under your feet and it can kind of slow you down. Notice I did the, you know, jump out and then grab the ledge trick. You can easily see where the icicles are going to fall here. That was a little ballsy, but I've died so much to them, I kind of know their timing, so... You know, I can be a little risky. You know, it's not going to kill you to wait. Actually, it might, because this level is a little close, so... It's all about getting a feel for it. I do a little roll here, I might gain a little speed from it. Stand back from that gate, do a little bit of roll here, and here's a great way to gain a little speed here. Do a roll, hang to the right. That guy sometimes can't even see you, but he definitely can't hit you if you hang to the right there. I've never been able to fully make it, uh, just going straight under this canopy here. The, the light always catches me. Same with this one right here. No matter how hard I try, that guy always catches me, so just hang back. Yes, this level will be uncomfortably close towards the end, but as far as I can tell, it's the only way to do it. Now, I jump off the ledge early, but this seems to really screw with your run speed, so uh, kind of jump up the ramp like I did, just to maintain your speed. You want to activate these two, and as you go down, hold to the right, because that's where the door will be. You want it to open as quickly as possible, and from there, you have one worthless enemy, but otherwise you are home free. Next up is the Unseen Foe. This one might be a little of a slower moving level because we have to utilize our invisibility technique. But it won't be too bad. We're given a lot of time even though it's a nice, big, somewhat open level. Here's a tip for this guy. Just wait and run around the right. You don't have to worry about hiding from him at all. Here you will have to go into your stealth. By this point, we are able to move while stealth. That probably doesn't save you a whole lot of time. But, you know, couldn't hurt. This one is all about positioning, just knowing where the spotlights are going, knowing when the lasers are coming, and positioning yourself so you can take the straightest path possible. And once again, right here, patience pays off with these geysers, but I noticed that one just went off, so I hurry to get through it. This guy actually isn't too bad. In fact, just hug the wall, jump, and you can get it in with only having to stealth one time. Here you have a few pathetic enemies. I think those cat enemies are probably the second most pathetic enemy in the game. Even though I have died to one of them when I was doing my speedruns, which actually surprised me. Yeah, we'll be just running through a lot of enemies. Really, they're not even worth your time to fight. And here, the lasers will create these big open areas for you to jump in. The trick is just to spot where they're coming next. It just so happened that, it, you know, they kept creating him right in front of me. Be careful when jumping off of this right here. The distance is very hard to judge, and I fell quite a bit, and that will be a run killer. But... Once we get up here, we're at the end. Just look for your jump. And when you get down to this one right here, you can skip the next to last and just jump right down there, and that'll do it. Next up is the Flaming Temple of Flame. This one actually has a few neat tricks in it. Starting right here, grab the timer, roll down here, jump straight up, double jump, Tap the circle, and you'll grab onto this rail. I set off the alarm there, but I tell myself, you know, you just saved a whole lot of time, so let's just keep going. 
Yeah, the alarm didn't go off for very long either. Here, utilize jumps to just fly through that part. Good trick here is to roll. And you can take that guy out before he has a chance to turn around and throw a sword at you. This, you can save yourself time, but it'll cut. It, you'll cut it a little close there, and I was a little lucky to get that ledge grab right at the last second. You know, while there's a little lull here and not much action going on, I will say I didn't realize how much this level name reminds me of Crod Man Dune and the Flaming Sword of Fire. Funny series if you've never seen it. It aired on Comedy Central for like one season, then there was a million talks of the second one. Didn't happen. But anyways, back on topic. The big tricks of this level, I believe, are done. A lot of it is just more straightforward here. Oh, how could I forget? Here's the biggest time saver in the entire game, I think. And I discovered this kind of on the fly. I looked at this and said, hmm, I wonder. Activate it, wait for it to go up just a little bit and jump on it. You can completely skip that part. Saving you a lot of time. Other than that, though, I think that was the last big trick. There's, of course, stuff like doing the ledge jumping here. But that saved us so much time. This is probably my most successful run. That not much I could think could be improved other than not setting off the alarm at the beginning. But there you go. That's how you get through that one. Last up is Duel by the Dragon. This is the final Carmelita Fox level. There's really not a whole lot of trickery going on, it's just a matter of knowing where to go and what to do. Um, I believe I actually beat this one. It's not very hard. I, I beat it either on my first or second try, and you'll tell, like, when I get towards the end, I'm a little hesitant because I'm not sure exactly where to go, but even still, it works out, so... Yeah, it's just a matter of using your eyes and seeing the path ahead. Like, notice here, you could jump to the left or to the right. I have no idea what, ha what, what the one on the left is for, but you don't really need it. Just go to the right. It, the jump is a lot easier to make. Knock that down and continue on. Don't know why they even throw that pathetic enemy at us, but once again, just notice where you have to go. The coins will lead the way. Set off these two, jump across, and set off the third one here. Just continue forward, it's pretty much impossible to get hit by her as long as you keep moving. This part is kind of speed capped, so you have to wait against these things. Once again, uh, someone skilled could probably just jump around them, but... You know, it's not really needed. She fires, you have to wait for two shots and then she'll target the next one, so... Your speed is capped on how far you can get through that. You can run along the first part of this roof, just be sure to jump there, and then right here the ledges get a little higher, see I get stuck there, so... I want to jump on the last few. And this part's a little annoying because the camera is pointed so you can't see what's coming and there is a guard right here. I can see this part being a little hard if you're just kind of unlucky or your timing is just a little off with her shots, but she'll start targeting the pillars here so she can knock them out. They'll come back, but if she targets the one that you're going for, you might have to wait. Luckily, it did not happen to me here. Quickly set off these two and climb up here. I, I didn't trust in the fact that there were coins leading me up there, so I kind of hesitated and said, no, this is probably the way. And it is. And now, just run around the edge, ignite all of these fireworks, and that is it. That is it. 100% completion. We got all the Master Thief sprints, and we have 100% of the game. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, note that you will have to grab the exit once it floats over here. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, this was a very enjoyable project. Next up, uh, maybe not directly after this, but I will have um, another console game. I will have Ratchet and Clank. I just got to do some practice runs on it. So I'll see you guys then. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. Check out this fascinating behind-the-scenes movie.